Welcome back to Bit Break. The theme of today's video is one of my favourite things to talk about, love stories between women. I've got 21 books I'm going to tell you about today and a real range of stories here. So we've got beautiful queer love stories, we've got tragic stories, stories that end in heartbreak, stories that end in happily ever after, coming of age stories, a real range, whatever you'd like to read about. What all of these books have in common is they show off love between women. So let's get right into it, starting with Devotion by Hannah Kent. This is a beautiful love story between two girls. It takes place on this epic journey to Australia. And this book is really personal and special to the author Hannah Kent herself. She said that she wrote it as a sort of love letter to her wife. There is a twist halfway through this book, which I'm not going to go into now, but it does turn the book into something else that you maybe weren't expecting. And the only clue I will give you is that it's a twist I wouldn't have thought that I would have liked, but it's actually something completely beautiful here. Next, I'm going to show you two books by Kieran Millwood Hargrave. So starting with The Mercies, this is a book that takes place on this remote, freezing cold island off the coast of Norway. It's based on a true story. In 1617, there was this horrific storm which basically wiped out the entire male population of this Norwegian island, and so the island was left run by women. And of course, the patriarchy being what it is, the idea of an island full of women was absolutely terrifying to these men who decided that the island must be full of witches. And so it became this devastating witch hunt. But against that rather bleak backdrop, we see a beautiful love story develop between two women, one of the inhabitants of the island and the wife of the man who is sent to root out the evil of these witches. So an unlikely pair who, against all the odds, fall in love. And then Kieran Melwood Hargrave's next book, The Dance Tree, which is coming out in May, also has a sapphic love story in it. So this is another book inspired by a real strange story from history. This time it is 1518 Strasbourg. In the middle of this hot summer, a woman starts dancing by herself in the middle of the square, and then more and more people came to join her. And this really happened. It was this strange mass hysteria, this phenomenon, no one could understand why these people could not stop dancing. And so based on this bizarre true story, Kieran Millwood Hargrave has written a beautiful book about three main female characters whose lives intersect in different ways. Kieran Millwood Hargrave is herself a bisexual author, so you will find a lot of queer friendly content in her books. The Exhibitionist by Charlotte Mendelssohn, a great one for anyone who loves reading about dysfunctional families. This family is the most dysfunctional of all. So our main character, Lucia, is an artist, a very, very successful artist, in fact, whose husband has not been able to cope with her success, especially when his own career is dwindling. And he blames her for everything that has been going wrong for him, so they have this very unhappy marriage. Meanwhile, Lucia has been falling for a woman called Priya. So the book revolves around an exhibition that Ray, the husband, is putting on to showcase his work and for which he has gathered the whole family together and all of the drama that comes with that. And Lucia is trying her best to make everything run smoothly. But Lucia is reaching a breaking point. And so the time has come for her to choose if she will put her career first at last and if she will follow her heart. In Another Place Not Here by Dion Brand is about two Caribbean women who find refuge in each other on an island in the middle of a political uprising. And we spend half the book with each of these women and both sections are told in different dialects and in prose poetry. They're kind of like two novellas that come together with this great love story at the centre. Then I've got The Pull of the Stars by Emma Donoghue, and there are so many books I could have chosen from Emma Donoghue's backlist. I actually recently did a video for this channel all about Emma Donoghue, and so I will link to that below so you can click through and watch and discover that there are so many queer books in her backlist. Further back in her backlist, you'll find more lesbian rom-coms. This one that I've picked, The Pull of the Stars, is a very sad story, a very moving story, but a completely brilliant book. The Pull of the Stars is set during the last big pandemic, the Great Flu of 1918, and this book is set in Dublin 
in a hospital on a maternity ward where women who are in labour um, or getting ready to give birth but have become infected with this flu are being quarantined. So it's an absolutely terrifying environment and we follow three main women, a doctor, a nurse and a volunteer over the course of a few days on this ward. There are a lot of very upsetting scenes in here. I found this book so powerful but so unpardonable and it is Amongst all the darkness, it is a book about hope and strength and resilience. And sapphic love. Patsy by Nicole dennis Ben spans the years after Patsy abandons her five-year-old daughter, True. She leaves her behind in Jamaica and moves to New York to follow the woman that she loves. You still care so much about Patsy, even while you're equally devastated for True, who is struggling so much with having been left behind. So we go back and forth between the characters, and they both just really, really won my heart. And we also, as well as getting to see Patsy fall in love with women in New York, we follow True exploring her gender identity back home in Jamaica, so there is queerness throughout this book. America is Not the Heart by Elaine Castillo is another sweeping novel, so the present day section is set in a Californian suburb, this Filipino-American community, where our main character, Hero, has moved to live with family after fleeing a traumatic past back home in the Philippines, and is also where she meets and falls in love with the makeup artist, Rosalind. Through flashbacks, we learn more about Hero's past in the Philippines, where she worked as a doctor for a group of revolutionaries, she was captured, she was tortured, so there is a lot of trauma in her past, but there is a lot of hope in her present and future. Next for something really weird, because what else would you expect from Julia Armfield? This is Our Wives Under the Sea. So Miri's wife Leah has never been the same since she came back from a deep sea mission that went wrong. She was gone for months, Miri was never told what was going on, and when she eventually returned, Leah is barely able to speak, and she is seeping salt water from her skin. So as well as all this surreal weirdness in the present day, we also get flashbacks to their life before and really fall in love with them as a couple. And we also have chapters where we follow Leah down on this terrifying deep sea mission. So you really get to know her. And then along with Miri in the present day, we're really mourning Leah, who has just never truly come back from the depths of the water. Pages for Her and Pages for You by Sylvia Brownrigg. I always show these off as a package deal, even though they were actually published more than 15 years apart. In Pages for You, Flannery, who is a college student, meets and falls in love with a grad teacher, Anne, and they have this incredibly passionate but ultimately doomed relationship. In Pages for Her, we catch up with these two later on in their lives, we see where their lives have brought them, and we watch their paths finally lead them back to each other. Then there's One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston, and the love interest in this book is a time-travelling lesbian. What more could I want in a book? This is a love story between August and Jane, who meet on the subway, only it turns out Jane is actually a time traveller from the 1970s who has got lost in time. And it's got this amazing queer cast of characters, loads of pop culture references, and did I mention the time-travelling lesbian? Concerning My Daughter by Kim Hai Jin is actually more about the mother-daughter relationship, but I still really wanted to include it in here. So this is a book about a mother who is really struggling to accept her queer daughter's chosen family. Her daughter is having financial problems and comes back to live with her mother, bringing with her her girlfriend, and the mother just can't accept this. And so the book is mostly about the mother's internal struggle and her journey to realising that her daughter's family is a valid definition of family, but we do get a portrayal of this really strong, stable and loving relationship between Lane and Green, even while Green's mother is so hostile to them, their relationship is really wonderful throughout the book. Jane Eyre fans will love this one, The Animals at Lockwood Manor by Jane Healy. This is a gothic historical fiction novel set in 1939 when Hetty is tasked with overseeing the evacuation of the Natural History Museum's mammal collection. She is in charge of keeping them safe while London is under attack, and so they end up being housed in Lockwood Manor, this remote country manor house, and Hetty has to stay there along with the very cold and unwelcoming Lord Lockwood, and his beautiful but troubled daughter, Lucy. So it's partly a ghost story, the animals seem to start moving mysteriously in the night, it's partly a love story between Hetty and Lucy, who is haunted by ghosts of her own, and you will have to read it to see why I said that Jane Eyre fans would enjoy this one. 
And while we're talking about ghosts, the main character in Briefly a Delicious Life by Nell Stevens is a ghost. The ghost of a teenage girl who has been haunting a monastery for 300 years and falling in love with many of the girls and women that she encounters there and making it her mission to protect them from the attentions of men. But then, in 1838, Chopin comes to live at the monastery, bringing with him his partner, George Sand, a woman who dresses in men's clothing. So we get this true story of Chopin and George, but told through the eyes of a ghost of a girl who loves George. And then for some YA, The Mermaid, The Witch and the Sea by Maggie Takuda Hall is about a gender fluid main character, Flora, or sometimes Florian, who is a pirate. And aboard the pirate ship is Lady Evelyn, who is en route to an arranged marriage that she is dreading. The two fall in love and together must deal with mermaids, witches, and the dangers of the sea itself. Then I've got two Cinderella retellings to tell you about. The first is Cinderella is Dead by Kaylin Bayron. This is about 16 year old Sophia who is preparing for the annual ball in which girls are paraded in front of the men of the kingdom and any who are not chosen, who do not manage to find a match, are never heard from again. But Sophia doesn't want to marry any man at all and when she meets Constance, who is the last known descendant of the original Cinderella, the two must work together to bring down the kingdom once and for all. In Cinder Ella by S.T. Lin, Ella is transgender, but after her father dies, her evil stepmother refuses to acknowledge her as a woman, refuses to even call her by the right name, and that is on top of all of the cooking and cleaning she is forced to do. But at a royal ball, Ella meets the princess Lisabetta, and the two share a magical hour together. So when Ella is then banished by her evil stepmother, she must find a way back to the princess that she loves. Love is for Losers by Vibka Brueggemann is a book that I've talked about a lot, but it is just so much fun. This is a YA story about Phoebe, who thinks that love is for losers until she meets Emma. The book is sex positive, queer friendly, it's got found family in it, it tackles some pretty big issues but with humour throughout. It's everything you could want. The Henna Wars by Adiba Jagada is a rom-com about two teenage girls with rival henna businesses. So it's sort of an enemies to lovers romance, more like rivals to lovers. And it raises loads of issues along the way, from cultural appropriation to homophobia, but ultimately it is a story about the joyfulness of two queer girls of colour finding love. Last Night at the Telegraph Club by Melinda Lowe is set in the 1950s in San Francisco and it's about two teenage girls, Lily and Kath, who find sanctuary at a lesbian bar called the Telegraph Club. But America in 1954 is not a safe place for two girls to fall in love and Lily, who is Chinese American, is also living with the constant fear of her father's deportation. And finally, the last book I'm going to recommend is Tell Me How You Really Feel by Amina May Safi. So this is inspired by a whole range of classic rom-coms, but made queer. This book is about the cheerleader who falls for the film student, despite these two girls being very, very different. And what's really fun in this book is that the girls' sexuality never causes them any issues at school. They are totally just accepted for being who they are. So, finishing on a lovely, happy note with that one, I would love to know what your favourite books are that tell love stories between women. Do let me know your recommendations in the comments below. As you can see, I read a lot in this area, and I will also link here to a playlist of all of the other videos we have made here on Book Break Before, recommending books about LGBTQI plus stories.